Okay, so this is going to be the last part of your um, LED sequencer schematic. And with these changes, then you'll be at the point where we're going to actually be able to fabricate the board. Now, I've got to kind of caution you at this point. We're trying to figure out how to do this in the fab lab using what's called the other mill. We'll be talking about that in a little bit. But let me go through the final steps on the schematic. So at this point, your schematic should look something like this. Might be a little bit different. That's okay. Um, and from the previous video on part creation, you're going to add that little slide switch, which is called switch one here. Now, one thing you're going to need to correct to start with is the terminal block that I'd originally had selected for this project. The pads are too close together to work with the other mill. And that's the milling tool we'll use to make PCBs. And so we need to change that. And so please see these notes. First of all, the part that I'm talking about is this part right here. Um, and if you take a look at the notes that I have written here, please delete the original terminal block and replace it with a new terminal block. And the library for this is ConPhoenix 508, and the part is MST2V. So let me show you where that is. If we go to ConPhoenix up on the top here, and go to Con Phoenix 508 and go down quite a ways here to where it says MST2V. That's the terminal block we're using. And the reason we're using that is the mill that we're gonna use uh, can't mill out the space between some of these pads. So we have to use a larger terminal block and that'll work fine for this project. Okay, so that's one thing that needs to be changed. The last one is a way to, that we can select the speed, kind of to go from a slow speed to a fast speed. And the way we're going to do that is to use the switch that we created in the previous video. And I'm going to move that switch over here. And what we're going to do is select between two capacitor values. Now, how we're going to do that is by deleting some of these nets we have, like that, and moving this capacitor over here. And then I'm going to insert that switch. I'll turn the pins on just to make sure you can see where uh, everything's connected. So I'm going to use a net and I'm going to connect between that pin and this pin. And again, as just a general caution, some of you are missing connections. If you click on this eyeball show button, and then click on the net, it'll show that everything is connected. It'll, it's a little hard to see, but these, uh, the pins light up kind of pink and the net shows that it's connected. So you know that's a good connection. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is add another capacitor. Now this is where you're gonna have to figure out which capacitor size you wanna use. I'm gonna give you a little bit of latitude here on how this works. Whoops, and I forgot something here. We also have to make sure we've got a net connection here between pins two and six where they're connected before. So what we're gonna do with this circuit, let me move this whole thing over a little bit. I'm gonna move it over a little. What we're gonna do is add this switch that'll select between two different capacitor sizes, okay? In one case, we're gonna use the 10 microfarad. And if you want to use a smaller value, that's fine. I can't remember what all you have in your kit. But if you want to have like a, a fast speed and a faster speed, what we're gonna do is add that capacitor kind of like the way it was. And then what I'm gonna do is add another net here on the top switch. And I'm gonna add another capacitor. Now in this case, um, again, you'll have to actually do some measurements or check the spacing on the capacitor you want to use. I'll leave that up to you. But we're gonna go to the RCL library here. and we're gonna add a C pole US. Scroll down quite a ways here. And I'm gonna just use, probably it's gonna be something similar to this size here, uh, two comma five dash six, something like that. So I'm gonna add another capacitor. And maybe this one is gonna be, um, I'm gonna change the value to one microfarad. And then I'm gonna add another little net here. And I'm going to copy over, I ended that, by the way, by double clicking. And I'm going to copy the ground symbol over here to that side. 
Okay, so what the switch is doing is now allowing us to select between one capacitor that's going to make it go run slower or faster. The larger capacitor takes more time to charge and discharge, therefore the larger the capacitor, the slower the flash rate. Maybe in a couple of weeks we'll go over the 555 and how it works. There's a lot of details there, but I want to focus on the schematic creation. So if we move the switch to the other position, it's going through a smaller capacitor, shorter charge time, shorter discharge time, so it'll flash faster. And that gives you a way to switch between two different speeds. Now, um, let's switch back to the board here, and I wanted to rip up the board before we started. Typically, you want to do that when you're making any changes on the schematic. Okay, so I ripped up this board by clicking um, the rip up button here. Whoops, that's route, sorry. Rip up, and then if you click on rip up and click go, and yes, that'll rip up all the signals on the board. So the switch, probably when you ran this, the switch was located down in the corner. So we're going to move it up to some position, maybe over here, and move this capacitor over here. Now, in order to make this um, board work on the other mill, we've got to do a few different things. We've got to make the board larger because now we're only going to be routing on one side of the board, which is the, on the bottom of the board. The reason for that is that when we're doing a single-sided board, all of the traces have to be on one side. And it gets really complicated if we try to make a double-sided board. So we're going to kind of start simple here. Now, some things you'll notice in the way that I, I've laid out my board. I've tried to make it so that the auto router can route it as easily as possible. So, for example, um, I moved these diodes close to this LED. You'll notice that these are the ones, if I click on the uh, show button and then click on the net, those are the ones closest to that LED. I'm trying to bring things kind of close, group them close together to make it easier to route. I also found that if I rotated, the 4017, um, it was originally in this position like this, but then it had to try to get a lot of these nets connections from the bottom of the IC over to the top. So I found by moving it, by clicking move, click on it and right click twice, that makes it a little bit easier to route those traces. So I made the board larger. I've rearranged the parts, tried to space them out a little bit more. Um, again, if you want to do something a little different, that's fine. But you're going to find that this auto router is going to be a little, it's going to have a little bit of difficulty routing this on one layer. Um, and I haven't really, I hadn't really added the switch when I first started this process. So again, I want to kind of visually look and see what makes the most sense to make it easy for these traces to be routed. Usually, we don't have to worry about this at all. And the reason for that is because the auto router, if we're doing a double-sided board, it has very little difficulty um, routing a double-sided board. That's not hard. A, a single-sided board is a little tricky. Now, one of the other things I need to show you before we actually route this is that in order to use this thing called the other mill, um, we need to add what are called DRUs, design rule, um, or DRCs, design rule checks. And how we do that is we click on DRC and we're going to load what's called a uh, rules um, file. And I click on that load and the one we're using is the other mill DRC 1-32v2. And what that does is basically defines how close the traces and the, and the pads can be routed. Um, I will post this file in, in Canvas so it'll be easy for you to find. Okay, you'll notice here under rules, it says eight mil traces, that's the minimum, and 31.26 mils clearance between any pad and trace. Now, usually we can tra route traces a lot closer, and that's one of the things that makes this a little bit more difficult. But once I've loaded that, I'm going to click apply, and then once we run it, we'll check it. Now, my guess is that when we run this, it's probably not going to route to 100%. We're going to try to get to as close as possible. Um, but for example, I'm going to move these resistors over a little bit, leave some more space there. Um, maybe move this capacitor up a little bit, move the IC up or over a little bit. And you'll notice, like for example, here the traces are crossed. I'm going to right click that to try to make that a little bit easier for the router to route. 
Okay. Now I can kind of check this by clicking on this rat's nest button over here. When I do this watch and you'll see some of these traces move around a little bit. And it's showing where things are going to actually probably land as far as how it's routing it. Okay, so let's go ahead and route it and see what percentage we get up to. This will probably take a few tries. I'm going to route it. Um, by the way, for my routing options here, um, I'm selecting high effort. Um, probably not necessary, but one thing that's very important is that I am turning off the top router. The only thing that's going to be routing is the bottom, so all you'll see are these blue lines for the bottom traces. Oh, that's a little weird. Not sure what's going on there. Let me see what's going on. Okay. Not sure what that means. Ah, but it does not like it. I'll have to figure this out. Let me come back to it. Okay, I figured out my problem. I had saved the file in the middle of a route, and it didn't like the fact that the two were different. Okay, so let's go back to auto route here. And I'm going to set off effort to high. Oh, by the way, real quick, I'd also set the class, the, the trace widths. If you click on rules, the trace widths are 12 mils. Clearance is 32. I think by default that'll come out okay. So you might want to change those in your settings. Okay, so let's go ahead and route it. And I'm going to put effort medium to save a little time. This takes a little time. And continue. And hit start. And I'm going to pause this because it's going to take a little bit of time to finish up. Okay, by the way, um, routing boards is very processor intensive. And so if you've got a whole bunch of stuff going on, if you've got a bunch of um, Google Chrome windows open, if you're running some other software, you might want to shut things down because the, um, the router, they actually use it as a benchmark to find out how fast processors can run. It's very math intensive. Okay, so I got through 94% of this. We, our goal is 100%. Let's see what, it, what we didn't get through here. Okay. So it had a hard time getting on these yellow air wires. These are nets that it's trying to route, and it can't quite get to those locations. So I'm going to move things around a little bit. So for example, you'll notice this resistor here. One side is connected here, and it's going all the way over here by the LED. And the other side it's trying to get to is there. So it would make sense if I move this resistor now, you usually don't want to do this without ripping up, but if I move it over here, then it will be able to route that very easily, probably. Um, especially if I make sure I'm keeping track of what the correct net is. Yeah, something like that, or maybe even over here. So I'm going to try a couple of things. I'm going to rip this up. Rip up, go, yes. Um, I'm going to move that resistor. Oh, I already moved it. There we go. I'm going to click rat's nest. There we go. Um, yeah, so now you can see that this resistor, it was all the way over here, and it'll be a lot easier for it to route over on this side. Now, you'll notice there's some crossover here. If I move this over here and this one here, now I've eliminated some of the crossovers. That should make it a little easier to route for sure. Okay. The other problem I ran into is that this one, a couple of these um, nets over on the bottom, for the 4017 are having a really tough time. So I'm going to make some more space for it. I'm going to move these capacitors over here, leave this switch down here kind of towards the bottom, run rat's nest, and we're going to run this again and see if we can get to 100%. If not, we might need to make the board a little larger. My board size right now is Three point, if you take a look on the X and Y, is about 3.3 by 2.4. So let's, you'll have to make your board larger probably than you had it before. So I'm going to auto route it again. Let's see if we can get to 100%. Okay, got up to 96%, getting a little closer. Um, and I can see that there are only two unrouted traces, it looks like. 
Um, I'm going to try this a couple more times real quick. If this does not work, there's some other workarounds. We could manually solder the wires on if we had to. Now, usually, again, with a double-sided board, this is not a problem at all. Um, it's usually very, very fast and easy to, whoops, take care of. So I'm going to rip this up again. I'm going to move this capacitor. Uh, it looks like it's going to be kind of challenging. Um, rat's nest. And move this guy. Let's just try moving this over here. I don't have a strong sense of confidence this is going to fix it. So we might need to just do a little shuffling around. Or maybe we can do it this way. Okay, I'm going to route it one more time. If this doesn't work, then we'll probably make the board larger. Um, and this is kind of what you're going to have to go through on your board. The goal, again, is to try to get it to 100%. If it gets only one trace off, that's okay. We can fix that. So I'll run it one more time. Okay, I finally got it to 100%. Um, I think what helped with that is I spaced out the diodes, and that gave a little bit more room for the traces to route. Now, normally, we're not going to have to worry about this so much, especially when we get to double-sided boards. But I'd like to see if you can add these last parts, the switch, the extra capacitor, um, change the terminal block, and then see if you can turn off, again, how we do that is if you look at the auto router, we're going to turn off that top layer and then just have the bottom. It could actually be set for auto. That might work a little bit better. Um, and then hopefully if you get that all done, uh, we should be good. We should get to a point where we can actually um, see if we can get these boards made. Now, a few things. On these boards, the silk screen will not be visible, so that doesn't really matter. Um, and it's not going to be, it's going to be a little tricky to solder, but uh, we'll see if we can work through that. So go ahead and try to see if you can make those final additions, get it to route. Make sure, please make sure that in your schematic, you have run the ERC and there are no errors like disconnected wires. Um, these kind of errors are not a problem. But a few of you have some errors where you've got overlapping pins or no connections. And if you make the board, it will not work. We have to make sure that uh, the quality assurance part of this has to start from the beginning. So we need to make sure the schematic's correct, the board's correct, and then move on from there. Okay, if you have questions on this as, as we're, you're working on this this week, let me know. But I will post a video of uh, actually making this on the other mill so you'll get a better sense of what that's like.